You're watching Flutterflow source code news and updates with the latest news and updates from the Flutterflow source code. Hello and welcome to Code Reports. Today we are going to talk about four code reports, actually called uh, updates, and those are from the 20th of September. Uh, we have another one from uh, 29 of September, and we have another one from 30 of September. I haven't made those videos because the last updates were so minor, uh, but let's begin. Let's let's first start with the first one. So if I click on the first one from the uh, 20th of September, you can actually see there is only one uh, method that it's added uh, to the flow uh, utility and it's about the stateful widget uh, extends on state uh, and it's a check if the widget exists before safety setting state so this is actually uh, this is actually like internal thing in Flutterflow, which is like checking uh, if the widget is mounted and if it's mounted, only then set the state uh, to the callback, uh, which is like I said, it's an eternal thing. You don't need to worry about that or there is not like an improvement, like the big improvement that you will see is just the backend improvement. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one is from 29th of September, a couple of days ago, five days ago, actually from the time of recording of this video. And if it, it's actually a big one, uh, there's a lot of updates uh, here. Uh, they made like 14 changes in the files. Uh, so the first file is actually only, the first change is actually only added line or in this case, I think remove line or something like that. It's not uh, relevant. Uh, and then we have in the API manager, uh, we have this token. We had the token before, but now they added the beer uh, better, uh, and I think better it's a standard, so that's why they added it like that. And I think this is the way to go, so good improvement there. Also, they added to the response of the API call before we didn't have the try. The right side actually is the new uh, code, the left side is the old one. If you're just wondering, so they added actually a try block. Uh, so if you get a re an invalid response or some error in the response of the API uh, when you're doing in Flutterflow, now they're, they're catching it. Uh, and for some reason, if you're if it's failed, uh, they're actually catching it and uh, uh, they're just returning a null uh, if there is no return. Uh, there is no return. Uh, and then we have, they added one line here. I think it's the same thing, but... Uh, I don't know, this is not relevant as well. And then also catching in the data, so in super base database table. So it's the same thing when you're querying a table in super base right now, also they're catching the errors. So it says error query row. And now you should be able to see the actual error, which is super, uh, super helpful if you are uh, querying uh, uh, super base and you have some issues when you're uh, in your SQL uh, or your querying. Uh, usually this is made by further flow. So if you have some error, uh, it will be it will be like in your logic, your variables, uh, uh, variable, sorry, or something like that. And then um, inside further flow model, now we have the abstract class for the flow model, which means the abstract class is the class that you cannot call actually, it's just abstract. Uh, so you can actually put things inside this class, it's just you can think of it. And now it's, it's extends the widget. Uh, and then they added some, uh, some logic in it. It says the widget associated with this model uh, that is useful for uh, accessing the parameters of the widget, for example, and that they have this widget. Uh, so and then this uh, will always be non-knowable when used, but it's knowable to uh, allow us to dispose of the widget in the dispose method for garbage collection. Uh, so I really like uh, that they added those commands as well. So we uh, people who are digging inside the source code of source code of Flutterflow, 
we actually know better what what this code is doing and why they added it. Uh, and then they have this remove reference to widget for garbage collection purposes. And then the second, uh, this, uh, so the the next the next thing it's inside Flutterflow uh, util uh, as well. It's in the, this file, uh, and they actually changed the logic of uh, the email regex. So. Wherever you see this K, if you're wondering what is this K over here, the K indicates that this is like a global variable that can be accessed around your uh, Flutter app. This is like uh, the general uh, terms of rule. Uh, if you want to have like a global variable, just put a K before that. So you know that this uh, variable is a global one. And this was the old logic of validating an email using a regex in Flutterflow. And now they changed it. They made it more complex. I don't know. There's like arguing like what is the best uh, email uh, regex out there. Uh, but uh, I don't know. What do you think, guys? Is this better than this one? Probably it is. I don't know. It looks more complex. And then let's move on. And we have the Flutterflow widgets. And then uh, they're returning no uh, over here, uh, but they actually change it to return the widget options hover, cover, or uh, or if it's equal to no, uh, they return no. If it's not equal to no, return the cover uh, transparent. So it's always actually a for me at least, it's always a bad practice to return no, because if you return no, uh, your uh, logic in your app can crash, uh, because if you're not expecting to get a no, the whole app can crash. So actually for me, this is a beneficial uh, upgrade of the code, update of the code as well, uh, like getting a cover, like a default cover, which is a cover transparent. So getting a default cover, even if it's transparent, it's still a cover. So it's uh, I think it will be it will it will work better. And then we have in the Flutterflow nav bar, um, they added actually the import to the provider, and they have this uh, root page context, uh, and then they have is uh, activate a root page, and they have a couple of logic over here. I think this is related to the routing uh, of the of the general page uh, pages in Flutterflow. Uh, I cannot say for sure, uh, but I think it's like, like location and then it's the, the location. And then they are using actually this location to route the page to the desired location of the user or something like that. I'm not really sure, like I said, what this exactly is doing, but it should be something like that. And then let's move on and we have the update data, uh, sorry, upload data. Uh, and this is actually one, if you're uploading a file uh, in Flutterflow, this is the file that it's been used. Uh, and I'm using it all the time, actually. They change that. It says uh, picket media, uh, if it's equal to no or is empty, and they just change it. So if it's empty, and I think if it's empty, it's also, uh, also equivalent to equal to no, uh, I think so. I'm not sure, but I think so. And I, I think that's why they change it like that as well. Uh, and then let's move on. And we have the Flutterflow model. If you remember up, I showed you that they added uh, the in the abstract model, uh, which I think was over here, right? They added this, uh, they added the widget as well. Uh, and now you have to pass it. If they added it, you have to pass it as well. So they're passing it over here. In the home page model, they're passing the home page widget. In the home page widget is actually the the uh, the page. Every page in Flutterflow, uh, the name of the page is uh, the name of the page and then widget. So the whole page is actually a widget. It's not actually a widget. I think they're calling it a widget, but I think in, in like in reality, it's not really a widget. Uh, but it's it's uh, made by widgets. Uh, and then we have the home page widget again, and we have the gesture detector, and then we have a focus uh, scope, and we have of the context request focus, 
uh, on top, but they changed that a little bit. And now they have the Modo uh, Unfocus node uh, can request focus. And if that is true, if we have data over here, uh, then it's the focus of, uh, it's actually the same thing as here, as here but if it's not true, uh, it's actually non-focus. Uh, so the focus is, uh, it's not on that particular uh, uh, gesture detector. And then let's move on. And this is a big one, like I said. And now uh, they had to change uh, the flow, flow whatever they're using the flow, flow model, they had to add the page. So they added over here the page. In this case, is a login uh, widget. And you can see it over here. It's a login uh, model. Uh, and then the last two uh, are actually the login widget uh, and then have the same logic over here. So they have uh, the same logic if it's not, uh, if it's not, uh, can request focus. So if it's if the focus is not requested, then it will not be in on focus. But if it's requested, it will be on focus. And this is actually returning a boolean. If you're just wondering uh, how they did that, this is actually returning a boolean. So that's why we have this question mark over here. So if it's true, do that. If it's false, uh, do that over here. And the last thing it's in the pub dev. They actually updated some packages. Uh, it's image picker, uh, and they updated it as a package for image picker. So that's that's for that. And let's move on to the last one. And the last update is actually, it says from 30 September, but this is actually not a flow, flow update. I actually changed uh, some logic on my homepage inside the app that I use to get the source code of the uh, data. Uh, of the flow, flow sorry. Uh, so those changes are actually unrelevant uh, to the flow, flow source code. Uh, you can simply ignore this update. Actually, it's not uh, about that. So thank you very much for watching, and I see you in the next code report.